Hey guys, my name is Ben Ferriolo. You know, if you haven't seen my most recent video about how PNSN removed some data from their catalog and didn't report the recent low frequency events at Newberry, then please go to my channel, click videos, and watch the most recent video. Remember, if a video is longer than 10 minutes or so, I will always add a parts section in the description box below. This will be a very quick video. I just wanted to let you guys know that volcanic activity could be increasing at certain areas around the globe. First, Anak Krakatoa erupted not too long ago and affected many, many people with the eruption and also the tsunami. And now Mount Etna in Italy is erupting and saw a brand new flank eruption around noon on December 24th. Seismicity is elevated and they are expecting this new round of eruptions to continue and possibly strengthen over time. Here you can see some pictures of the recent eruption on Google. It was pretty large and dusted multiple cities in Italy with ash. Just wanted to show you guys the seismic data for this eruption. It's actually pretty intriguing. Okay, so this was 11 hours ago. That's when the photo was uploaded. Here's another picture from quite a ways away. It was a pretty good size eruption, guys, and it was a flank eruption, meaning that it occurred on the side of the volcano. Like, it didn't go straight up. It wasn't straight from the summit. And here's another view. Yep, it was pretty good size, guys. Uh, let's see, is there any... Oh, here is a satellite image right here of the eruption. And let's see if there's any good ones. Here's kind of a good one from very far away, casting a shadow on the cities. This, I don't know if this is from the recent one. Probably is, though. Yeah, so its activity has been increasing at multiple volcanoes worldwide. Now, where will that lead? Let's see, what is this? Mount Etna released a gigantic ash cloud. That does not look like Mount Etna. That looks like an asteroid. And I believe, yeah, that's old. So yeah, they it did see a good-sized eruption, guys. Very interesting, too. By the way, guys, I forgot to say Merry Christmas. I hope you had, a, or are having a good Christmas, excuse me. And I hope Santa got you everything that you wanted. Now, here we are at Mount Etna in Italy. And real quick, I'm going to show you ESLN. You see that right there? Now, here's the location of Seismic Station ESLN in the IV network. Notice the database it says INGV. That's weird. Why doesn't it say IRIS? That is the Italian Seismic Network's data database. Excuse me. You cannot find any data for IRIS, I mean from IRIS, for Mount Etna, so it may seem impossible to find data. However, if you do wish to know the step-by-step -step process to gather data from the Italian network, then please email me or comment below. I can help you out. Since the INGV da database doesn't really have a working da data download center at all, I had to completely generate my own link. I then have to edit the link whenever I want to change the parameters, copy it, and then paste it into the URL while on the NGV website. INGV, excuse me. Sorry guys, I just woke up a little bit ago. It's been a pretty crazy morning with the kids opening gifts and stuff. <laughs> So this is a lot more confusing than the IRIS database. Hopefully IRIS does put some stations out here soon, but I was able to gather data for Mount Etna from the new eruption that occurred less than a day or so ago. Now, let's check it out real quick. Remember, it's going to be data from ESLN, which is, I doubt many people know how to gather data from here, but I'm able to, so if you need help, just let me know. Now, here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm. It's see Swarm 2.827. 0.7. <laughs> Man, I'm still pretty tired, guys. E-S-L-N-B-H-Z in the IV network. Let's pan over. All right, so you can see right here going to about 3,000 amplitude count, there was a low-frequency background tremor. This is normal for Mount Etna. Mount Etna is very active. It sees harmonic and volcanic tremor pretty much every day for years and years and years. But it seems to have been building for a little while, and I think I know why. I think it was building towards this eruption here. Notice this seismic station is a, probably not as good as it should be. It only goes to a maximum hertz of 10 hertz. But still, since a lot of volcanic stuff occurs at a lower frequency, we can still see most of the volcanic events. So let's go through multiple earthquakes, guys. They've been having hundreds of earthquakes, multiple. Now let's keep going forward to the eruption. You can probably see the eruption right down here. Let me pan this down just so you can see. And let's see, right here, yeah, this is the eruption, right here, the flank eruption that everyone's been talking about. This was the closest se seismic station, excuse me, that I could find data for, ESLN, in the IV network. Let's take a look real quick. 
Do I have persistent rescale off? Yes, I do. I do not need a filter right this second. Multiple microquakes. I think the largest one was around a 4.0, I think. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know. Multiple earthquakes. Let's go through. Let's go through. More of a long period earthquake right there. Now, let's look at one of the larger ones. Look at this. I believe this is an eruption right here. This it looks kind of similar to the Kilauea eruptions that were occurring. The waveforms look kind of similar. So I believe that is an eruption right here. Look at that. And it was building for quite a while, guys. Now, where does this activity start? Let's zoom all the way out. I see. I see. Okay. So it starts right after this earthquake, pretty much. See, it starts right there around 1112 UTC. Let's zoom in. Right there. Okay. Let's go forward. Man, yep. This is the eruption right here. Look at this. Almost 100,000 amplitude count. Because here's 50,000. That's zero. That's almost 100,000, guys. And this is a continuous tremor at almost 100,000 amplitude count. That's crazy. This was a strong, strong eruption, guys. My goodness. Oh, <laughs> check that out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if we can do manual scale. Four, five. Four, five. Let's see if this works. So let's zoom all the way out. There we go. Okay, so now we can see sort of the eruption. Let's pan out. Yep, you can see it right there. Notice how it's below the 2 hertz line again. Notice how with volcanic eruptions, some people will say, Oh man, the whole spectrogram will turn red. It'll all turn red. Well, yeah, this is getting close, but notice how the whole spectrogram is not turning red. You can see earthquakes with higher frequencies a little bit. But down here, it only goes to, well, like 2 hertz maybe. Let's check out the strongest frequency of this entire area. Let's see. Yeah, around 1 hertz, guys. Around 1 hertz. That's pretty low. That's usually where all the volcanic stuff occurs. So this is the eruption right here. It looks pretty cool, guys. Check that out. I'm praying that it doesn't get any worse because it looked like a good-sized eruption. And remember, they are expecting Mount Etna to collapse into the sea. They don't know when. But it is on its way to collapsing. Here's another. I believe that's another explosion. Same with this right here. This right here. This lasted, I'm going to say, maybe 1042. Maybe about three hours. Two and a half, three hours the eruption lasted. Peaked right around this area. My goodness, guys. This was a very interesting swarm and eruption. Now let's go down. There were more earthquakes. Notice the long end tail of this earthquake. Notice the long coda. Let's zoom out. My goodness, guys. Now, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> Is this a calibration spike? Nope. I think this earthquake was so strong. Look, 10E5. Guys, that is a 10 followed by five zeros. So, wow. Guys, that's big. That's very big. Uh, let's see. Yep. I think these were just so... Look, 2E6. That's a 2 followed by six zeros. That's 2 million, right? Yeah, that's 2 million. 2 million amplitude count right there, guys. 2 million. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it again. 2 million amplitude count for this. No wonder it screwed up the seismograph, guys. That was big. My goodness. But a lot of these, I think, are shallow. Right under the volcano. So there is a new influx of magma at Mount Etna. I don't know if it's going to call... Whoa. Whoa there, buddy. I don't know if it's going to calm down. I don't know what's going to happen, but seismicity is continuing. My goodness. If anything changes, guys, I will for sure let you know. But you know what we should do? I think I know what we should do. Let's check something out real quick. Uh, anything else interesting? Looks like it started to calm down at the end of this day. Let's look at the most recent data. And that one's got a long coda too. But yeah, my goodness, where where to go? Where to go? Is this it? Nope, that's not it. Where to go? Aha, uh -huh. two million amplitude count. Again, just think about that, guys. Two million amplitude count. Now I'm gonna go to INGV database help, which is the Word document that I created. This is the link that I had to personally construct for myself 
to gather data from these stations. And you can edit the start time and the end time, the network station location and channel code, just like normal. But right now I want to do the most recent data. So let's change it from the, let's see, 25th at 00 UTC to right now. So I'm just gonna say the 26th to top it off. Same station, same location. All right, now let's copy that real quick. Let's go to here and let's go to the size comp database see this is where they have the url builder for the italian network it doesn't work at all here let me show you you know how on the other ones if you put parameters in it automatically updates the url down here well look look nothing nothing it doesn't even i think it's broken so because it's broken or just doesn't work how it should i decided to just make my own and it works watch you're gonna see this blue thing go away I've proven to you it works. Boom. It is downloading right now. Okay, so let's check out the most recent data for Mount Etna real quick. Wait for it to download. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's downloaded. All right, let's open that real quick. Open. Okay. This is the most recent data so far of Mount Etna. Let's turn persistent rescale off as usual. Let's look at some of these earthquakes. Background tremor going to about 6,000 amplitude count. That is strong for a low-frequency volcanic or harmonic tremor. Multiple earthquakes, multiple sets of earthquakes, guys. Look at that. I'm not seeing any other eruptions, but there is something down here I would like to show you. Let me pan forward. Nope. You know what? I'm just going to pan this down. Why don't I? Okay. Here's another larger earthquake. Let me pan this up real quick. Look at that, guys. Now, this right here does look like there was another smaller eruption. It does seem like it goes to 4E5, which is also a 4, followed by 5 zeros. Not as big as the 2 million amplitude count, but still pretty big. Dominant low frequencies. Let's check the strongest frequency of this event real fast. 1 hertz and a little bit below 1 hertz at about 0.68 hertz. So that's pretty low, guys. So we did have a low frequency event right there for Mount Etna. This is cool, guys. I love looking at the seismic data for Mount Etna. It's pretty cool. Going to about 10,000 amplitude count, we do have another background tremor with low frequency characteristics. As usual, the same background tremor that Mount Etna is always seeing, pretty much. Always seeing. This one had higher frequencies. Look at this. 10,000 amplitude. I think it's increasing, guys. I think there is another eruption approaching. I just want to see the background tremor real quick. 10,000. Almost going to 15,000 amplitude count. That's much stronger than the volcanic and harmonic tremor at the Vidyaminov volcano in Alaska that I've talked about before. Much stronger, guys. Much stronger. And it seems to right now, as of right now, which is 2.21 p.m. Pacific time, December 25th, 2018. Merry Christmas again, guys. It does seem to be increasing right now. The last part of the data stream, all the way at the end, is about 6,000 amplitude count. So it does fluctuate up and down during the day, but it does seem to be increasing just a little bit. See, 10,000 amplitude count again, only for the background tremor. Yep. So I do believe there will be another eruption approaching for the same area that saw flank failure. So Mount Etna is erupting once again, guys, and it seems like it is a brand new eruption. Remember, a flank eruption is when a volcano erupts from the slopes or the side of the volcano instead of the summit. Ashfall has been reported, and many lava flows have been spotted coming from the new eruption area. And just in case if you guys didn't notice, just this is the constant background tremor, volcanic or harmonic. Remember, harmonic usually means that the waveform oscillations are perfectly spaced, almost perfectly spaced. Volcanic tremor is more like multiple low-frequency events happening in such rapid succession that you can't even distinguish between them, so it looks like a long-period tremor. Yep, this is what something concerning looks like. Now notice this is half of the frequencies that we see on a normal spectrogram. Normal spectrograms on some other stations go up to 25. This only goes to 10. So this is very low. This only goes to about 2-3 hertz. It does obviously go up above more but very weak frequencies but the dominant frequencies are let's just check it out one more time below two hertz which usually volcanic and harmonic tremor have dominant frequencies below five hertz so this definitely is a low frequency background tremor but etna has seen it a lot but it is increasing 
I think Mount Etna always sees low frequency background tremor. I think that's just how it constantly is because it's constantly erupting over and over and over and over again. Okay. Just lovely how during the government shutdown, the webcam is not working now. And that means no one's going to be up here to fix it. So, how, just how wonderful. So remember, if you live in the area near Mount Etna or anywhere in the Mediterranean Sea, please be careful. The professionals monitoring Etna believe the flank of the volcano facing the sea is starting to slide faster and faster. And it isn't just a small portion, guys. It is a large part of the volcano that is starting to destabilize. If it fails, and it will eventually, but no one knows when, then it will create a massive ash plume, much like the Mount St. Helens flank eruption, because remember how Mount St. Helens did not erupt from the summit? Did not erupt straight up. Remember, if you look at the time-lapse imagery of the Mount St. Helens eruption, you can see the entire bulge and the flank of Mount St. Helens just slide. It was mainly the whole flank of Mount St. Helens is what caused the eruption because it just slid right down and completely destabilized. That is kind of what is happening with Mount Etna right now, but no one knows when exactly that will happen. And again, it could be much like Mount St. Helens, if not worse, and also create a deadly tsunami that would make the recent volcanic tsunami in Indonesia look like child's play. So please keep the people there in your prayers, and let's hope it calms down. Is volcanic activity increasing? It could be, but today, let's go over here real quick and refresh the page, just so we have the most recent. Okay. All magnitudes in the past 24 hours, as of 2.25 p.m. Pacific Time, December 25th, 2018, Christmas Day. It seems seismic activity itself is quite calm. Look at this, guys. With the largest magnitude today being a magnitude 5.3 in Indonesia and a 5.2 in Japan. Two 5.0s, two 4.8s, and then it goes down from there. Now, you know, 5.3s, they're, they're not too big, but they're also not too small. But still guys still i thought seismic activity was gonna skyrocket just a few days ago but it looks like that it calmed down just in time for christmas really once christmas eve, eve hit all the seismicity started to calm down you know however that could obviously change by the time i uploaded uh upload this video right here excuse me so you never know guys so thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a wonderful christmas my kids are really happy playing with their new gifts, and they love the gifts that came from Santa. Have a wonderful New Year's, guys, and I will see you soon. Remember, if you need any help finding seismic data for areas that seem impossible to find, please let me know, because I kind of know how to get around the system. God bless and be safe in this crazy world. Let's hope this Christmas calm will last a long time. We need a break from disasters. Let's look how calm it is, guys. Look at this. I I've... I, I mean, I know it says 205 earthquakes, but I believe they're usually a little bit more. But where are the 205 earthquakes coming from? Mainly Southern California and Alaska, and that's pretty much it. And that's normal areas where we see normal seismicity all the time. But still, if you just look at the map for Christmas Day, it is calm. I have to say that's a blessing. My goodness. So you guys have a wonderful day. And remember, this calm could change in the blink of an eye. Like, there could be an 8.0 earthquake in the next 15 minutes. So you never know. All right, have a great day, guys. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I'll probably see you next year unless something major happens.